Hello guys, welcome again to another lecture. So in this lecture, we're gonna, uh, you know, uh, explore the memory layout or how the, any MIPS computer sees the memory. So this is basically, uh, there is basically one assumption for the memory that always any MIPS computer assumes, which is basically that there is uh, two gigs byte of memory organize it in that way so you have the lower portion of this memory the first 400,000 uh, hexadecimal you know uh, uh, bytes are reserved also you can assume that you know the uh, the upper part you know uh, from that portion until you know uh, the last byte here which is if 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 is also reserved you can assume so so basically uh, the MIPS computer will you know or the programmer you know you can say will use you know the uh, the middle portion and this middle portion is uh, is divided into three parts you have the text segment part and this text segment part will contain the program itself so basically once you write the a program and this program is compiled into or converted into zeros and ones the final executable file the final object file that was as we explained the last time will be stored you know in that portion here okay the second portion is called the data segment and this data segment is is uh, is divided in, an in another two parts one part is called the static data segment in which we store the static variables and static variables are you know basically global variables it must be a global variables with a static size fixed sizes like let's, let's assume you have uh, like uh, a c code you have the main function here and before the main function you uh, you know you defined you know like uh, a variable x with you know as integer with value zero so this is basically a global variable because it can be seen it can be seen by all you know the the functions in that in that in that program c program okay so that variable since it's a global one with of course with the fixed side because it's integer it will be stored all the time in that static portion the second you know portion is called dynamic data so basically here the the sizes of, of this data you know containers are value uh, variables uh, or, or will will it change with the program as the program grows and one example here you know in c is malloc so whenever you define the malloc like an array that you don't know uh, uh, in advance its size how it's how its size will grow you define it as a malloc or for example new in java so this would define an, a container that is not uh, that has no fixed size yet. Okay, basically when you do this, you define the first byte, the address of the first byte, but then it can grow and it can grow, uh, you know, uh, up like this. So basically, the, the, the this dynamic data portion is is has no fixed size. That's why it has you know a, an arrow like this, and this is basically the heap. So if you have some idea about the heap before, this is the heap. This is the heap, you know, portion of the memory. The third portion, which is a little bit weird, is the stack segment or the stack portion of the memory, which start, you know, uh, somewhere here and goes uh, or somewhere here. I'm sorry, and goes downward like this. Okay. And you know this is usually the assumption about the stack. The stack is goes, you know, uh, down. Not uh, so. Whenever you want to store a new, a new, a new, uh, a new variable in the stack, you know, you should you should decrease the stack pointer. For example, the stack pointer will, was was pointing here. When you store a new value, you should decrease this you know uh, value by four byte for example if it's a four byte variable and so on and here's some uh, hint about how a program can crash for example if you have like an infinite recursion so a, a function that keep calling itself okay that's an infinite recursion and we're gonna know uh, or study in the future videos about the procedures and the functions 
and we're gonna see examples of recursive functions you know written in, in assembly and you know uh, and in these procedures or function calls basically we're gonna use the stack a lot and here is you know an idea how a program can, might crash basically since the stack goes in that way opposite to the heap so when it when it when it intervene with the heap or when the heap goes and intervene with the stack segment at that point you know the program can be crashed you know and you should of course fix it okay guys that's basically you know the you know uh, an overview about uh, you know the memory that's basically the need, the most needed information for us to start you know uh, talking about the procedure calls because in procedure calls we're going to talk about all such you know uh, b uh, you know uh, segments in in the memory thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video bye bye